Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP. Today on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at how I came up with the bracket that holds the speaker for the HF radio install in my wife's car. So that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. All right, folks, uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about the components that we used for this build project, uh, this sort of crazy idea that I got in my head. So what I was thinking about is this perforated metal strap that you can get at most major hardware stores. I know certainly Lowe's and Home Depot and places like that. And I've used this for different projects in the past. It's, it's not very expensive. It's easy to, to cut and work with. Uh, so I thought it's already got some holes built into it. What if I would get lucky enough that these holes might even match up to the stem uh, that come out of the headrest? And in fact, I did get lucky. In fact, two of the holes did pretty much perfectly match up. Uh, usually my luck doesn't hold <laughs> quite that well. Uh, so all I was going to have to do was make them larger. So uh, I got a four foot piece of this just to make sure I had enough for the project. And what I actually did also was cut two pieces of it. I wanted to make sure that we would have uh, a, a reasonable amount of strength and there wouldn't be too much flex and bouncing around. The next major component for the build was just some rubber grommets. Now for the rubber grommets, I ended up just going to Amazon and I just looked at a whole bunch of grommet kits and this had a, a large number of different sizes of grommets. Uh, I was only going to need two, <laughs> but the kits weren't very expensive. And again, my wife wanted me to, to focus more on making the project look pretty as opposed to, you know, spending a couple extra bucks on it. So I got this big kit and uh, sure enough, there, I found a size in here that was really almost perfect for the size, uh, the diameter size of the, uh, the metal stems that come out of the headrest as it goes into the, the back of the seat. So that worked out nicely. Again, not real expensive. It was a few dollars, but now I've got probably a lifetime supply of grommets. <laughs> so that's, uh, that'll be okay. And sort of the fine, final major component for the build is I thought about painting the apparatus once I had it done, but I just wasn't real comfortable with how, how well that would look and how, how good the longevity might be. Uh, and again, this is going to my wife's car, so she wants everything to, to, to look as nice as possible. So I got the idea, what if I just got some large diameter heat shrink tubing and just heat shrink the whole thing? It would be quick and easy. And uh, so I found some inch and a half heat shrink tube. You can see the part number there on the screen and had a three to one shrink ratio. So I knew that that would shrink enough to conform to the, the metal strapping. Um, so that was the, the, the plan. And uh, those are the components that I, I got two, two things off Amazon and uh, the metal strap I just got at, uh, at Lowe's. Uh, the final sort of major bill component was I used a step drill bit to uh, expand the holes in the metal strapping and then just to open up the holes uh, once I had heat shrinked everything. So you can get these at, uh, at Harbor Freight or, or Lowe's or Home Depot, pretty much or off Amazon. You can find these anywhere. And it just helps you work with multiple size holes without having to uh, change out the actual drill bit a whole bunch of times. So those were the main components and we'll talk about the rest of the build in the next segment. All right, and here we can see that we've uh, drilled out a couple of the holes. Again, it got really lucky, found two holes that were pretty much the exact spacing I needed, just had to make them bigger, and put the grommets in there. And I was also lucky in that the grommets uh, were tall enough to go around both pieces of the metal strapping. So uh, I was getting a lot of luck in this project, and it seems like I don't usually have quite that much luck. But it was working out really well so far. And so then in the next segment, I moved over and started working with the heat shrink tubing. So uh, we'll uh, take a look at that. Uh, again, I, I didn't want to paint things because I just had a feeling that the paint would tend to chip and break off and not have the longevity that uh, I might want to have. I mean, you can always repaint things, but I just really didn't want to have to get into that. And again, my wife wants everything to look uh, as nice as possible. So spending a little bit of extra money on some components wasn't a concern for her. So I figured I would uh, try to follow her wishes and, uh, and, and try to come up with a way to get this to look nice and, uh, and also not be you know, particularly labor intensive. So I got this uh, inch and a half 
heat shrink tubing off uh, off Amazon. Uh, again, not real expensive. I think this was a, a four foot section or something like that. Again, way more than I needed. Uh, but now, you know, you just slowly build up things for future projects. And I knew it was wide enough to to go um, over the strap, uh, but with a three to one shrink ratio, I also knew that it would be enough to to tighten up and conform around the strap. Because uh, you can see it's less than twice as wide as the strap. Uh, and without really ever having used this particular uh, brand or style of heat shrink before, uh, it worked out really well. I was actually pretty amazed. Uh, it did do a, a good job of shrinking and conforming to the, uh, the component. Uh, you can see where the grommets are, and, and I'll open up the holes for those a little bit later. And then, of course, you just had the, um, uh, the end points, which I trimmed off. And the thing with this, uh, this heat shrink tube that, that actually worked out really nicely is it was pretty thick walled uh, before it was shrunk down, but it really thickened up as it shrank down. I just used a regular heat gun for that uh, from Harbor Freight. But you can kind of see right here, it got really thick and also very stiff when it shrunk down, which was a good bonus for the project because, again, with the two pieces of metal, it really made a nice... Uh, component that didn't have a whole lot of flex to it. Here you can see that we simply, I had an external speaker for the FT991A that's going to be mounted towards the rear of the vehicle and uh, just mounted the speaker with uh, the stainless steel hardware and some, um, you know, nuts and bolts and, uh, and washers. And uh, again, the, um, the speaker is not going to be hanging out a real far distance from the stems and everything. So again, there's there's a pretty good amount of stiffness, so it's not going to be flopping all over the place. It's, it 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 uh, didn't make any noise at all on our our trip to California and back. It was uh, over four thousand miles. Uh, worked out really great. I mean, it it it's it's one of those projects that everything seemed to come together and work perfectly, <laughs> which just doesn't happen all that often with a lot of things. And some of the other areas of this entire project didn't go quite as smoothly. Most things went reasonably smoothly. I was pretty happy about that. But, uh, but mounting the speaker, it's easy to put it on and off. Uh, it's not a permanent uh, addition to the car. You can put it in the, with the, um, the headrest, or you can take it right back off again. And, uh, and when it's on there, it, it looks pretty good. You, you, you don't really see it when you're facing forward, but it does get that speaker right up next to your head and your ears. So even with some road noise and going down the road, you, know, you can hear the radio just fine. So mounted those up, uh, and uh, as we'll see in a minute, uh, put that on and uh, took a look at it and it ended up actually working really perfectly for the purpose that I wanted it for after having considered and uh, sort of tossed away some some other ideas for how we might uh, mount everything. So that worked out really well. So we'll kind of see the finished project uh, here in the next segment. All right, so here we can see the finished product, folks. I think it turned out uh, really nice. It, uh, it worked pretty much perfectly the way I envisioned it. It gets that speaker right up there, out of the way, but right near your head and your ear, so you can clearly hear things as you're going down the road. The uh, the holes lined up from the strapping. Uh, I have no idea what the odds on that would have been. Uh, I don't think I would have uh, would have made that bet. Uh, the grommet found pretty much the perfect size in that that kit, and uh, they were thick enough to go around both both pieces of metal I wanted to use. The heat shrink tubing worked exactly the way I hoped it would and was even a little, uh, ended up being a little stiffer than I thought it might, but that just worked to the advantage of this particular project. Uh, and it looks nice, you know, you get in out of the car and, and you pretty quickly forget it's there and, and don't really see it because it's, everything's pretty much black like the seats and, and so forth. And I think my wife tended to forget about it as well. So that was the main goal is to, to make things that are functional for the project, make them look pretty nice and keep the wife happy uh, the other thing is this is really easy to take in and out. You can easily take off the headrest, pull this right off the stems and put the headrest back. So when I'm not actively in the car and we're not taking trips and things like that, uh, it doesn't even have to be there and it, it's easy to put it right back in the next time you want to use something. So I've tried to, to design everything in this project so that it's, uh, reasonably hidden out of the way over on the passenger side as much as possible. So with her doing her daily driving, she'll not see anything or barely see anything, and it won't be an annoyance to her. And uh, that's probably a good thing, too, <laughs> to not annoy the wife uh, in her own car. So it worked out perfect and uh, worked out well uh, for the trip. 
and uh, I can't wait to use it some more. We're going to see some of the other aspects of this project and how they turned out as well in some future videos. And we'll do some future videos where we get this car out and uh, actually use the radio and do some mobile operations, maybe uh, some POTA uh, and some other things. So that's going to pretty much wrap this one up, folks. Uh, this is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We will see you folks in the next video, 73.